uh, dear friends, colleagues, uh, comrades, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, I greet you with all the greeting that you like. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, uh, salam alaikum. And I hope that you are uh, having a prosperous, safe, tranquil life, inshallah. Let me, before I start, remind you with COVID. COVID is not a joke. Two years ago, we were talking about conspiracy theory, which it could be. I'm not denying it. But whether it's conspiracy theory or not, it's a reality. I lost a few friends of mine and relatives. Uh, one of my relatives, my cousin, she died after struggling for three months between the end of Ramadan and the beginning of uh, the Hijjah. The second one, after having COVID, she is in hospital in deep coma for the last two, three weeks. I lost also quite a few friends who died, unfortunately, young people, not, not old people. Uh, the, the latest one is, did not die, alhamdulillah, but he had a stroke and he is hemiplegic and he couldn't be able to talk, to walk, to communicate. Hemiplegic and have got paralysis in the body, in one side of his body. May Allah give him cure and you. So please, if you did not take the vaccine, please take it. Take the two vaccines, but the visor, the, the, the virus is renewing or mutilating, muting itself. And now we're looking about the third or fourth generation of the virus. When I said I took the two vaccines, which uh, for the first two mutation of the virus, but the third and the fourth, I will need to have another injection, inshallah. So don't take it light. Take it seriously. Today we'll be talking about uh, Fatfada, five to five. I don't know what to do, how and where. Just a state of confusion. And you can see my drawing, which I drew last week. I'll explain the drawing later on to you. But I'll have to thank sister, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Aya, for preparing the slideshow. Uh, the whole world is in a turmoil. 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 Particularly uh, the Arab and the Muslim majority world, which is the Islamic world. I've got uh, different stages of social, political, economical, ethnic, and armed conflicts in these countries, unfortunately. And we started to see this since uh, the liberation, the beginning of the liberation era in the late 40s and beginning of the 50s. So more than 70 years now, that the Islamic and the Arab world is in the state of turmoil. This is because of a treaty called Sykes-Picot happened at the beginning of the last century to divide the Islamic world into countries by uh, uh, a pen and ruler. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about something which I wrote between 2011 and 2012. And I will, it has not been published. The book has not been published because I did not find any publisher. But anyway, this is beside the point. Uh, let us start by discussing some warnings and some way forward. When you have this kind of social change created by social movement or social and political change created by armed conflicts. Okay. But before we start this, let us ask the one trillion dinars question first is this armed conflicts or armed liberation wars or peaceful picketing 
or unrest or civil disobedience or social intellectual mobility and mobilization which leading to different social structure change will lead what was the aim of this we have armed conflicts of armed liberation wars of peaceful picketing and unrest of civil disobedience of social intellectual mobility and mobilization all this led by different social structures what for is it for a to seize the power and to take over or b to create civil social change and reform which one of them this is the first question to ask before we start our talk why because each of them this a or b has different paths different plans of action principles policies procedures values philosophical culture and reforms different two roads today i'm not going to talk about the takeover no i'm talking about the reform issue the social reform which is number which is number uh, the social reform not not the takeover but before i start talking about who is going to take uh, social reform i have to put 25 or 26 warning to those people before they start number one is to put at the back of your mind as ear and gear in your ears, winning the military war is not the end of the road. It's the beginning. War leaders might not be suitable to become the peace leaders. No, we might, might need somebody else. The battle of military liberation is much easier than the battle of social reconstruction. These three points are extremely valuable for the success of the second stage, which is the construction, the social reconstruction of the society. Our enemies are not those that we fight and we see and recognize. Our enemies could be deeply entrenched inside the state or the society, in our community. And the most difficult enemy for all of us is ourselves, the soul, the self, of the individual. It is the soul, the self, and the soul. So this is the worst enemy to each one of us. We succeed, then we disagree. Please be aware, our foreign enemies are less dangerous than those who were created by them from amongst our people. They leave behind those indigenous enemies to carry on their philosophy of thinking. Number six, what is the philosophy of our media message? You have a media message to talk to people. What do you want? What's, 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 what's the message? What's the philosophy of it? Is it geared towards the citizens of the country? This is number one. To the neighborhood, the neighboring countries, number two. The regional power, number three. Or globally to everybody else. So each direction has its own parameters. The message of the media. Number seven, what image that we want to portray when we talk to the people publicly? especially on the media. What do you want people to see us? Because people have to see us with their own eyes, not with, um, with how we look. Well, I don't have to look at the mirror to see myself, but I would like them to look at me, see how I behave. Let us agree together, number eight, that the real and the could be deceiving battle at the same time is what is the media button. This is the most dangerous and deadly button. This is the most dangerous and deadly button. Can we 
manage it or not? Can we be in charge of it or not? Can we win over our enemies or not? Number nine, the foreign media could play a very crucial role of, a, of failing any social reform or any social revolution or any change in your country because it's more powerful than your own local media. How to deal with this? this these nine questions will be among the 26 questions which you have to ask yourself before you start talking about making social change or social revolution. Number 10, our religion's dogma. Yes, I, you are a social reformer. You are making this social change, okay? You have a religious dogma, that's number one. You have ideology, you have culture, you have values, you have manners. Are these suitable? Are these suitable? Have you asked yourself, are these acceptable first of all by your own citizen? by your own neighborhood, by your own regional power and the global powers and the institution? Do they want it? If it's Islam, do they want Islam? If it's a part of Islam, do they want this part of Islam or not? You have to put all these risks on the table and start analyzing it. And let me ask a very stupid and naive point or question. Do we know the people who are claiming that they're making this social change or social revolution. Do they understand this terminology? I'm just trying to be like a, a primary uh, kid, a primary student, primary school uh, student or kid. Do they know what they mean by homeland? Government? What's, what's government? State? Society? Community? Initiative? Institution? Organization? Project, program, plan, strategy, roadmap, others and others and others and others. These very simple things. Do those people who are claiming that they would like to make a social reform understand this simple terminology? Number 12, do we have clear objectives, written and well studied plans, timely, executive, road maps, available human and financial resources. In 12, you have to have all, prepare all this before you start doing anything. Objectives, written and studied plans, timely executive road maps, available human and uh, financial resources. Number 13, we should remember that every citizen of ours have got his or her own dream, his or her own vision, his or her own objective. Can we accommodate all this and you can manage them? Because if you don't have your plan, your objectives, your roadmap clear, and you have five or 10 million people in your country, your plan, objectives which you engage people in it, will lead them to follow your plan. But if you don't have, they will make you responsible for implementing their plans, the 5 million or the 10 million dreams they have. Are we aware of every social component in the society? Like if we are living in a country like uh, Germany or a country like Saudi Arabia or a country like Egypt or Algeria, whatever it is, good. Do we know all the social components and structure and organization, the initiatives in the country, so we can deal with them or not? Are we aware of the strengths of the diaspora community? You know the diaspora community? If I talk about the Lebanese, it's the most obvious example, there's more than 12 million people living outside Lebanon in a better and aff more affluent way than the 5 million Lebanese living inside Lebanon. And each of about 10 million live outside, which is about 10%. Found from other countries like Iraq, like in if Palestinians outside Palestine, maybe twice as much as the number in Palestine itself. Iraq, 
Yemen, Algeria, African countries, Pakistan, Pakistan, there are millions of Pakistani living in the West, whether it's America, Canada, or UK, and other countries. The diaspora, the role of diaspora. Uh, number 16, what are the required resources needed to support our social reform? and build the state institution. Do you have them? I want some resources. Do you have them or not? Number 17, whom we trust? During the social revolution, we have our colleagues, or we call them comrades, or partners, or alliances, or citizens, public, or ourselves. We have to, we have to trust someone, someone to carry on. We cannot just afford of mistrusting everybody. Number 18, who are the real partners and allies? And amongst these, we have to create a group of partners and allies. Number 19, the institution, the current institution, does it have financial, human, and knowledge-based cognitive resources? to empower the social change or not. Like now, if you, if, if, if you are successful in your social reform and you look at the older institutions in the country, do they have the right human resources? Do they have the financial resources? Do they have the knowledge to enable you to take the state forward, or the country forward, or the sides forward. If you want to start the process of social reconstruction, we have to choose whom? The knowledgeable, experienced personnel, not the learners only. If the knowledgeable, experienced personnel are the learners, this is perfect. But if not, we have to get them and be careful with, with using the loyalists who are not experienced and are not uh, knowledgeable. Number uh, 22, future leaders. Did you prepare with us, or do you have with us second and third generation to complete after we go through the first stage or second stage? Uh, are we ready and prepared to face the deep, deep, deep corrupt states in the country? In each country, whether it's democratic or repressive, doesn't make any difference. There's deep states. The more civil liberty you give to the citizen, the more the size of these deep states will be shrinking. The less civil liberty, the more expanding size will be this deep states. You will know that there's a lot of deep, corrupting deep states, bad deep states in our country. They could be interconnecting or isolated, working in isolation or connecting themselves to other uh, foreign countries or foreign powers to try to create what we call it uh, counter-revolution. Are we aware of this? Number 24, what will happen if we fail? We could fail, what will happen? Who is going to be responsible for uh, the supporters, for the colleagues, for the partners and for the allies? Because with the counter-revolution, they will be torturing them brutally. Number 25, we can delay. The constitution is not so important. Start with it because it's actually, uh, will create a lot of disagreement. We can use the traditional 
uh, customs, the current customs, and tradition, the values, moralities practiced over the last centuries. No rush to write the constitution. The last and not least, what will happen if we have the victory? Okay. These are the 26 points which I put them on the table for anyone who is trying with his group to make any social reform or social revolution. You have to ask yourself these questions first. The second point, as I said, uh, there's warnings and there's way forward. You cannot just keep warning people without giving them alternative solutions. What is the way forward then? That's as one of my young colleagues was telling me. Do the following. Number one, you must have, you must, uh, you must, you must have a clear plan with a set of objectives, very clear, geographically, timely planned roadmap. Both of them have to go together. You cannot just make a plan without roadmap. And this will be according to the required resources that we have. You have a clear objective, roadmap, and the resources clear from the very beginning. Number one. Number two, we should organize five different working groups at the same time. Five different working groups at the same time. You could make them more, you can make them less. Number one, the working group will be engaged deeply in the field battle for social reform. Okay, this is number one. Number two, the working group, working on research, studies. Research study, working group on the culture, intellectual, political, economical, social, climatic changes. Why those groups, the first one engaged in the social reform, somebody is actually looking around to analyze, to, to actually, to, to study what's happening in this atmosphere. Number three, another, the third working group, uh, analyzing the result of the second group. Yes, they've got the research and somebody else will analyze it. Analyzing the results of the research study group. This group will be able to change the practical recommendation for different solutions and affecting different social lines into action. And this third group will take the data from the second group and change it to road uh, to, to plan of action, actionable plan. Number four, the fourth group will be studying the interest of the neighboring regional global powers are interested in our, chain, our country and the chain. Number five, fifth group. Another group will be observing closely the dubious movements of the different deep states in the country to try to counter the counter revolution. Five groups I mentioned. Five groups, but you can, it's entirely up to you to make them two, three, four, or you make them 10, it's entirely up to you. It's number two, way forward. Number three, you have to realize that the first transitional stage could not be two years, could be up to 10 years. And this is the most difficult transitional stage of social reconstruction and its success will be based on the following. So don't come and tell me the transitional stage is three years or three years. It could go up to 10 years, be realistic. And the most difficult, and if you want to make it successful, you have to observe these points. Number one, you have to have a philosophy to understand of this, uh, the philosophy of this stage 
is citizens' engagement. Keep citizens busy, engaged with you, discussing your dreams and plans. Let them see your vision. Let them share your objectives, strategies, programs. And let, them be, let them be a part of your social chain. This is the, the philosophy of these 10 years. Reassure and calm the public. That's number two. In the first transition stages up to 10 years. Unify the media message. Not somebody from this city will say something, from this city will say something opposing it. And all their messages should be based on the facts and figures provided to them by the research and study groups. The slogan of this period or not of this stage will be truth, forgiveness, and reconciliation with everybody. Consultation is a key for its success. Consult with all different groups and following the leaving no one behind policy. Making all our proposed realistic solution research based oriented. Don't make your solution as a great dream that came to your leader when he was sleeping or when she was sleeping and you woke up in the morning and said, no, no, they are not prophets. They are not, not messengers of Allah. They are not actually guided by actually a uh, revelation from Allah. It should be based on research studies. Don't use blindly any important solution because it has a different culture, different values, different people, different climate. But if you want to use it or to use some part of it, you have to accommodate it into your culture, your values, and maybe your people. Don't use this important solution blindly, that this happened in this country. Blindly. No, that's wrong. And this is what I see some of the ministers in certain countries just are fond of getting something and they actually implement it blindly as it is. Don't start building the economy on borrowing. On borrowing. I am 100% or 1,000% against. Otherwise, you replace the foreign colonizer with a foreign lender, and the foreign lender will become the foreign colonizers. Don't start by borrowing from us, especially the big and rich states or financial institutions. Building the civil side sector and the ethnic organization to help. Yani, keep pushing this direction while you are trying to build the country, you have to empower the civil society organization and sector. What is the first transitional government? As I said, first, first transitional stage could go up to 10 years. During the first period, which is three years, of the first transitional stage, which is 10 years, we have to choose a government. And I called them a technocrat government. I said, okay, fine. Where are you going to get from? I said, by electing the ministers, the technocrat ministers, from which from each ministry, we can invite all the employees, when we ministry of education, ministry of health, the ministry of uh, social welfare, or ministry of uh, agriculture, extra, extra, to get the employees to choose the first technocrat minister from amongst their executive directors. They will know better who is better to run the ministry during these three years. And to call it technocrat government. 
allowing political pluralism that 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 the citizen to organize and to register political parties. So somebody will say, what about, what, what about the parliament? Yes, there should be a parliamentary election. Whether you have political, existing political parties or individual, independent. But they have a restricted role because we have chosen all the ministers from the technocrat. What is their role? The parliament during these three years. First, establish policies and laws to fight corruption, violence, extremism, radicalism, and any form of discrimination and terrorism. This is number one. Number two, establishing the policies, laws, strategic plans to build the local economy. So this is the second big chunk which you need to. Local economy means that actually you have to empower the economy and to create more jobs. Number three, uh, three putting all legislation in places. Number four, agreeing on the new constitution over the coming, the first three years. These are the four, four strategic objectives of the parliament during the first technocrat government. Point after that, investing in different aspects of to strengthen and empower the economy. I mentioned the economy twice here. I mentioned the economy twice. I mentioned it as an objective for the parliament. Yes. As uh, another separate point as well. What are these local projects, a program to strengthen our economy? Number one is agriculture and livestock. Does not, it's not, a, it's not a rocket, it's not a rocket size. And all the related industries. Number two, local community market, building local community markets to keep money going around. Number three, uh, empower and invest in the professional fields of manual crafts and manual work. Number four, support and encourage the local transportation between towns, villages, cities, and districts. Those would be based on what is available of fund or money with the citizens themselves. These activities will lead to the rise of the capital cycle turnover, which will enhance the growth of the national economy and job creation. Point after that, investing in young people and women. Now, encouraging their initiatives and giving them, having them, giving them progress if they want to register their initiatives. Uh, or to just as a company, give them this period of three years. Empowering women and young people and encouraging them to engage in different aspects of life, social, political, and others. This is investing in young people and women. Supporting different types of social services. Yani we have to look carefully at what kind of social service that we want to provide to the people at this stage, like health, like education, like roads, like sanitation, and all this. Providing different facilities to attract investment, the investment of the national capitals. Yani we have a lot of rich people, citizens, and instead of running away with their money abroad, we can make plan for them to invest their money in the, in the in the country itself. This is uh, the way forward. Okay. Number three in the way forward. Why I put this footage here now? You can look at it. There are seven people in this image. There are three women and two men, oh, sorry, and four men. 
three men are looking at the woman who is crying, screaming, having this black hair, and she's in a deep agony. The other three pe people, a man and the two other women, who are actually better than the other people, well dressed, but they don't care about what the woman in black hair doing, and they don't care even about sitting together. But the woman with the red hair looking at this direction, the woman with the uh, uh, ginger hair looking at this direction, and the man with the uh, uh, blue glasses looking at me. And if they don't meet, it means that during this social reform, the community or the society or the citizen will be split, not into one group, but to many groups. And the woman in black hair, the crying woman, means that she is the country, she is the town, she is the community. I trying to, she is the mother, trying to bring everybody together. But this is the status of the citizens at the time of any social change or any social revolution or any even take over by other groups. Be careful that you are going to deal with a divided community, how to manage them. Point number four in the, in the way forward, and on the point number three, point number three was the transitional stage. Point number two was the five working groups. Point number one is clear objective. Point number four is to invest, 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 invest in all different kinds of education, especially vocational and manual craftsmanship. Education, education, education. Point number five in the way forward, which we missed it. Somebody asked, so what they didn't mention? He mentioned that you're going to have technocrat ministers, but he never mentioned who is the prime minister and who is the president and how can we choose them? Right. And this point number five. What about the prime minister and the president during this first period of the first transitional stage, the three years? Three questions could be elected from among the technocrat ministers. Okay, this is one, one option. Could be elected from among the public, individual stand up and for election, or by consensus among us all the social components of the social structure or the organization of the country. And their terms of reference in office during this period, which is the three years, which is the first period of the transitional stage, the first transitional stage will be specific, specifically, especially geared towards the strategic objectives of the parliament, which are the four points. Establishing policies and laws of fighting corruption, policies and laws, strategic plans, uh, build the economy, uh, legislation, and constitution. This four. So when this prime minister or this uh, president will be elected by either of the three, he or she will just strictly be guided by these four strategic objectives. It's number one. Number two, not to engage in mega project, mega economical, industrial, or investment projects. During these three years, the first period of the first transitional stage. And you have to realize that during this period, you have to work very hard, very hard to build the state institution and civil society organization. At the end of the second period, which is seven years, of 
the first transitional stage. يعني, in the first period, which is three years of the eleven of the ten years, is untouchable of getting mega project. Maybe you can look at it after the second period of the first transitional stage, which is after another four years, seven years. And you ask yourself this question, have we built all the sufficient state institution and are they functioning properly or not after seven years? Another question, which is number six in the way forward, do you have another transitional stage? Yes, we can. Why not? Why not? This question has been raised in response to the foreign investment. We shouldn't allow the foreign investment, which is the mega project, to happen at the end of the second period of the first transition stage, yani after seven years. It's too, too early. Unless we have accomplished these seven points. Number one, completed establishing the policies Law, legislation, and the government, uh, legislative and the government, governing procedures. Build the state institution. Measuring noticeable national economic growth. Completing and enforcing the anti corruption and the fraud laws and policies. Having adequate civil liberty space for everyone. Establishing the civil state and ensuring that non interference of the military. And security forces in the public affair and governing issues. This is if you, after seven years, which is the second period of the first transitional stage, have completed this and satisfied, you can start thinking about the foreign investment. But the question is. Will the reform result of the second period of the first transition stage allow us to open the doors for foreign investment or not? We have to measure everything before we start say yes for mega project and big investment. If you ask me my opinion, my answer will be don't touch it. Till the end of the third period of the first transitional stage, which is 11 years. And 11 years is not a big deal, it's not a long way in building social and, and building uh, social and in social building. 11 years are not much in the history of social reform and change, community and state institution buildings, as well as establishing the role of law in any country. Look at all the countries after the Arab Spring, after 11 years. Now, three countries started 2010, countries started 2011. Look at where are they? So 11 years is not a long way. What will happen after the first transitional stage, which is 11 years? Do we start a second transitional stage? It's up to us. For another 10 years, 11 years divided into three periods, three, four, and four. Then second transitional stage, another 10 years with aims and objectives suitable for the social needs, because the social needs during, after 11 years, will be different to the social needs before the 11 years. The failure and success stories of the first transition stage, or we consider that these 11 years are enough, and we are satisfied by completing this process, okay, of community building and 
building the state institution. In my own opinion, again, again, I think we have to take the agreement of all the different social components of the country. And if yes, we have to follow the strategy created by the parliament. Again, again, and again, to be guided. It's not nothing to be done haphazardly. What does this mean? All successive governments should follow this strategy, particularly in the first stage, the first is in the first transitional stage, three, four, and four. The role of this successive government should be the guarantor for the execution of this agreed strategic vision, which I mentioned the four of them. And even if we have not completed building the state institution, and building the economy, and fighting the corruption, do we need to go for a third transitional stage again or not? Or, or there will be a third transitional stage or not? This decision for the third transitional stage would be decided by one of three, by the three of these referendums. First, parliament referendum, which will constitute 25% of the votes. Second, civil society organization referendum, which includes all civil society organization mentioned here, constitute 35% of the votes. Third, public referendum, constitute about 40% of the vote. Someone asked me, why is 40% for the public, which is a public could be 100 million or 90 million, and the other two could be hundreds of thousands. My answer was to them, the first two A and B represent the critical masses the critical individuals. But the third one, which is the public, represent the silent masses. That's why I am balancing between the parliament, the civil society organization, and the public. The path or movement of social construction is never ending story never-ending mission, since our societies will be alive and hold the valid, the viable spirit of offering social solution. Since we have a society, we have to keep making social reform. My message to young people is, first of all, this, some of your characters, Characteristic characters. You are the clever and conscious, agitated and enthusiastic, jealous and adventurous, pious and righteous, sincere and believing, sacrificing and persevering, spending and giving, gracious and kind, merciful and forgiving, loving and humble, generous and taking advice, proud and honorable, keen and intelligent, noble and rich, youthful and strong, and more. These are some of your characters. This is you. Please don't trust. Don't trust, don't trust, don't trust. Pick up the fruit of reconstruction. No, there's no rush. Social fruits ripen in centuries. Irrigated, irrigated in years Blossom in decades. Its habitats will never be built before the social trees bear their fruits. Never be inhabited before the change of climate, of social climate. And never be multiplied or growing in size and number before the inhabitants' assurance.
If we study the history of man, I'll give you two examples from the old history and three examples, four examples from the recent. We're going to look at the mission of Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, in Egypt. He came to a strong state, but there was some problem happening to the economy. And his mission was 14 years to strengthen the economy of the strong country. So his mission was actually not to build a state from the very beginning, but took him 14 years. And he was a guided, supported prophet of Allah. And Allah has taken him to a very difficult path from the time they, his brother threw him into the deep well and to the time he was a slave or a, or a servant in the house of the uh, chief of, of, of Egypt at the time, chief of the army. Then he was put under test, uh, this woman who tried to seduce him, then put in prison, then came out to start only to uh, deal with the economy of Egypt, to sort out. The second one is the Prophet His mission was 23 years to establish the Islamic State. And he died before its establishment. Really, it becomes a state three years afterwards, at the time of Omar, when he started to put the department, different departments, which call it the Wawil, and different uh, sections in the state. 26 years took the Muslims to start building the state of Islam, the Islamic state, after 26 years as a state. Let us get you to a new experience, the Malaysian experience. Dr. Mahazir, Ton Dr. Mahazir Muhammad, became the prime minister of Malaysia in 1981 and 2003, 22 years. He invested heavily, <laughs> the government invested heavily in education, in education. And they took Malaysia from being one of the uh, fragile states in Southeast Asia, they become one of the strongest enemy, uh, uh, economy, not enemy, economy of Southeast Asia and one of the nine tigers of Southeast Asia in 22 years. And their success came because of two things, political stability and education. This is Malaysian experience. Turkish experience, Recep Tayyip Erdogan became the prime minister in 2003 then became the president in 2014. So between 2003 to 2021, they managed to take Turkey forward with a lot of challenges, particularly because he had the identity of Turkey as Islamic State, or trying to be Islamic State, trying to be Islamic government. They managed to achieve a lot and become one of the major player, global player in economy, yeah, different fields of action. Political, economic, global economical, political, and military players. So in 18, and his government as well, focused on two, political stability, as well as education. This is the second one. If the first one is 26 years, at least, Second one, 18 years and still going on. The third experience is Singapore. Lee Kuan Yew, Lee Kuan Yew was the prime minister of Singapore because for its independence in 1959, it was a part of Malaysia. 1965, it became independent and he was the founder of Singapore and the first prime minister of the Republic of Singapore. And through his commitment and his government to 65 and 90, he, he, he resigned or stepped down in 1990 and died in 2004. And he took two things seriously. 
education and political stability for the success, the result of success of this government. The per capita income of the individual rose from $435 annually, $435 to uh, $12,700. Five reasons were behind creating this economical miracle. First of all, geographical location of uh, Singapore is on the Malay Peninsula, on Malacca Strait, connecting the Indian Ocean with the South China Sea until it controlled 40% of the shipping traffic. Okay. Number two, political stability. Number three, commercial. They invested heavily in the port, connecting the port with 600 international ports and increasing the capacity of the port to accommodate 65 million, 65 million shipping and freight transport containers by 2030. Number three, he or the government made morality as a part of the system of the state itself. And what said, moral values, everyone should observe and they become constitutional. Number E, education. They consider that every child is gifted. And they treat the gifted children Accordingly, the children who are gifted with uh, a genius in mathematics, for instance, or astronomy, or uh, sports, or poetry, or geography, or arts, should be in the same class, in the same school. And this proved very effective over the last. 25 years. And Singapore is a shining star in Southeast Asia, not only Southeast Asia, but globally. Country number four is Rwanda. Rwanda witnessed the uh, worst, worst uh, most brutal civil war and ethnic cleansing of mankind between 1993 in 1995. Rwanda lost nearly 1 million people during this war or this ethnic cleansing or this brutal unrest. 2000, President Kagame came and they got two objectives. First, the national unity. Second, fighting poverty. In the national unity, they managed to mention the constitution of the country to forbid any sectarian or racial rhetoric. And not to use the word of uh, Hutu and Tutsi, which is what the two tribes fought against one another uh, in the 90s. Number five. And they managed to invest heavily in, 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 in education. And two years ago, 29th of February, 2019, they launched the Rwandan satellite. It cost the government $2 billion from the civil unrest. Less than 20 years ago, 1995, to going to the moon, the satellite in 2019. It's an economical miracle. It's become the fastest, one of the fastest growing economy in Africa. And 
his, the, a new constitution endorsing reconciliation and forbidding any racial discrimination rhetoric. Sorry. These are some examples for you, young men and young women. We noticed that education and political stability in the four countries, Turkey, Malaysia, Rwanda, and Singapore. All the main reasons behind the social and the economic reform in these four countries. Within what? Two decades. Malaysia, 22 years. Uh, Singapore, about 25 years. Rwanda is and 20, 21 years, Turkey is still actually going on, 18, 19 years. Question to you now, young people, are you ready to take this path? If you are, you can do it again, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you next week, another subject, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.